um, brain chemistry. And I was kind of talking about this earlier. What's dictating or governing all the behaviors in our life is really, you know, from a, from a large standpoint, is really our brain chemistry and what's going on up here. And when I started getting really into this information, I had some aha moments. I realized some underlying factors and some issues that we're not really, we don't consider. The psychiatric community definitely doesn't think about. The pharmaceutical company, you know, they're, they're out to lunch all together. So the two main areas of brain chemistry are brain hormones, which are called neurotransmitters, and something called myelination, which is all in the packets that you have. Um, brain, the first one is, this is like Dr. Gabriel Cousins has put a lot of information out there. David Wolf has put a lot of information out there on neurotransmitter health. And in a book, a, a Gabriel Cousins' book, Depression Free for Life, very good book, um, he talks a lot about this because he had experience as a psychiatrist, you know. And so a lot of the things that we name like ADD, ADHD, attention dialed to a higher dimension, Right? All the, like, you know, the D word. What's that? The D word? Depression. Depression. Right. All right. That thing. All these things that we pretty much, we just kind of like, we, we don't investigate or we're just like, or just use a scapegoat to sell pills. It's real nutritional underlying facts going on there that can be worked out very effectively, um, but it's going to require someone to completely get off the problem, which is the pharmaceuticals, which is the, you know, the processed food, which is the VOCs, the volatile organic compounds, which are chemicals that off gas off our furniture and our household materials. I'll put the story out there. There's a doctor named Dr. Daniel Amen, and he is the number one, number one doctor slash psychiatrist in the world that has the largest database of neurological scans. So what he does, he's a psychiatrist, but he doesn't really, he doesn't do the whole like, it's your father and your relationship with your mother and this is causing your trauma. He's, a, he's actually found out that people have holes in their brain. And that's causing the, the, the breakdowns of communication. He tells this one story I found fascinating where a married couple came to him and they were married for five years and the, I guess everything was great before, you know, it was like a classic story. We've probably all been through this sometime in our life. We meet that one, everything's beautiful, everything is like roses, but you know, a couple of years into it, they start to change because it's always, it's always both first. But they start to change and become someone different. Right? So that's what happened here. Five years down the line, they were doing marital counseling, and basically, I guess, you know, the wife was complaining, like, he used to be amazing, but now he's a, you know, he's a jackass now. Like, he became irritable, all that stuff, right? How does that happen? Two people that are in love, how does that just happen? Well, he did, st he did scans on his brain, and he found there were literally holes in his brain, craters. Now, do you think that's going to affect the way you behave in the world if you have holes in your brain, right? And so Dr. Amen questioned him. He's like, well, you have holes in your brain. And he's like, are you on drugs? And the guy's like, no, I've never done drugs. And Dr. Amen's like, he went to the wife and he's like, is he lying to me? She said, no, he's an asshole, but he's not lying. And so he, so he asked him, he's like, do you drink alcohol? And the guys were responding again. He's like, no, I, I don't drink at all. And so Dr. Amon's like, he's like, really? He's not, he's like, you know, drug addicts lie. That's one, that's his, that's from his words. He said that's the number one common denominator, right? So he's like, but the wife is backing him up. Something else is going on. So he asked him, what do you do for a living? And he said, oh, I work in a furniture, uh, furniture development store, whatever those things are called. He builds furniture. And uh, right away, he's like, Oh, so you are on one of the most powerful drugs there are, actually. It's the aromatic, you know, the 
the yeah. stuff that were the fumes that were breathing in, and very few people make this distinction. And it's really important because we all have furniture, and we all have cleaning materials in our house, right? And we're t we're all touching plastic, right? Number one estrogen mimicker is 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 plastic. So like plastic bottled water. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That is, the, I mean, if there's one thing I could get you guys to really get on, it's like this whole plastic thing, right? We got to get off all, you know, the best we can, but the big one is the plastic. And freezing it and heating it is even worse. Absolutely. Putting it in the microwave or putting it in the freezer. Oh my gosh. These women who are pumping their breast milk for their babies and yep. putting it in those plastic oh, bags. Oh, man. Yeah, not to make, yeah, it's not bad enough you're radiating the breast milk that has who knows what in it, but then the plastic bottle, right? Um, so my, just like the upgrade would be glass. If you get water, get it in glass. If you store water, store it in glass.